All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to King Win Pro League 2015, week eight, day one. We have gone through three matches today. We just, uh, we were just done, you know, casting Strife Crow versus Thais, which ended up being a very quick series indeed. Um, I actually looked back or in my head at the the last play that happened, and I think the wild growth really threw threw off um, Thais's line of play because that wild growth gave four mana to. Uh, Strive Crow very like much earlier than I think Thais anticipated it, which cued everything as a result of the the well, shade being yeah. there. That was yeah. a really really big deal. The wild growth was important, and it's always important. That's that's true. But um, I think this the blast mage that went four off the face. That was that didn't important. help. Yeah. That yeah. was that didn't help at all. So we're gonna be casting RDU versus Amaz as we mentioned before the break went up. We have RDU with Druid, Paladin, and Rogue versus Amaz's Druid, Hunter, and Warrior. So this lineup, those lines, uh, those lineups that is um, seem kind of interesting to me because the Warrior is gonna be able to do you know fairly well against the Rogue. Um, yeah, but, but it has a really tough time against Paladin and exactly. possibly even Druid. Mm -hmm. I would say even them worse against Druid than Paladin. Possibly, yeah. Nowadays, I think you can actually get away with playing that. Although, I don't know if Amaz is going to be bringing something like a Grim Patron deck or a more standard Control Warrior. I think the, the, uh, the ubiquitous Face Hunter in tournament play probably enforces Control War. But RDU is going to be playing Rogue for the first match, and Amaz is going to be starting up with his Hunter. And we've seen him play quite a bit of Face Hunter, which is a really good matchup if you're going up against a Rogue. Uh, unless, the Hunter's pretty happy. Yeah, he is pretty happy, unless there's... Um... An example, double heal bot. That's not impossible. It's been it's been you know played before. I remember seeing some lists running uh, two heal bots, two early ring farseers. Yep. And that was just you know it's a huge investment. But if you're expecting to face specific decks, it can be worth it. The thing is, is Amaz really going to pin RDU on playing very aggressive decks? I'm not I so sure. I don't think so. Yeah. I would rather think that Amaz is not even preparing specifically against rdu because rdu switched decks so often a lot yeah yeah he's not e easily predictable i would say that's probably one of his biggest strengths because he's a very good you know all-around player and mm -hmm. as a result um i think it makes it really hard to read him yeah, that's and true. He, he he does prepare his lineups pretty carefully if anything i'm and not exactly sure what the exact best is. lineups Ever. Of course, <laughs> RDU always has. If you ever ask RDU how good he thinks his lineup is, he's Before the always got the best lineup for the meta game. Yeah, for in this meta game, he's always got the best lineup. Yeah, it's always like that. If it's okay <laughs> before the tournament, I, I mean, if it, before the tournament, it's the best yeah. lineup. It's and after the tournament, the <laughs> it's it's either always the best or the worst. The worst, yeah. yeah. I picked the worst <laughs> lineup for the meta game. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna be going in the game here. It's uh, there's a web spinner, which I think wow. is kind of indicative of a mid range hunter more so than a face hunter, or a face hunter that decided to include that lovely one drop arachnid, which I'm not too sure I'd include that in a face hunter deck. That's true. Hmm. And a savannah hymen and a belcher. Wow. Yeah, definitely mid range. Now, this is a good matchup for Rogue, though. Now, it's a better matchup for Rogue because of the sap on the high main. It gets a lot better for them, but there's a pretty decent... There's no agent, there's a backstep, so that's the problem. Yeah. There's a pretty good cur, I was gonna say, on Amaz's side, and RDU has whiffed pretty hard oh. in this early game. Wow. Is he forced to use the sap? That, that will be horrible. I don't think so. I don't think he can afford doing that. Now, the worst nightmare of RDU is by like by far a animal companion. Anything else is fine. Oh, but he finds a three drop off the web spinner. This is perfect. Amaz getting the edge here, a huge edge, in fact. Oh, that's all. RDU is contemplating what to do, but I think he has no option. Only the yeah, Farsi, and that's it. Let's put that. that uh. This puts the hunter so far ahead. RDU would be forced to use the sap next turn, I would say. I mean, there's there's really nothing like deadly poison blade three would help him, but it's not even enough in this case. Hmm, why trade? Afraid of blade flurry is my suspicion. The fear of blade flurry is what made Amaz take that line of play, I think. 
maybe. But that sap will cost him a lot. Yeah, but there's it, it's a correct way play. It's... it's a correct play, but it's so bad. RDU finds even more. The web spinner is pretty not RDU, but Amaz finds even you know a better curve because whatever turn he ends up playing off curve, the web spinner will compensate for by just adding a little a bit of extra mana on the top of it. So Amaz's curve is essentially perfect. Well, there's a prep. There's a backstab. Let's see what he finds, and he finds another prep. Wow, those are not exactly amazing draws. And wow, this is so horrible. I mean, I don't even know what to say. I am speechless. This is really a bad draw for RDU. Dominating. Triple kill. I mean, this is going to be one of the fastest mid range. Although RDU could get a really sick blade for in the next few turns and get away with it. That is probably is going to be a saving grace. It's funny because he has the Tinkers. He's got the two preps. He's got everything he needs to set up a really good clean board wipe. The problem is getting it done. Like he needs to find a specific card in his deck if he wants to even stand a chance here. Well, that that's certainly something. That is something big actually when you consider the board state. The Vow Teacher can definitely benefit from that sap. There's the prep on the back end if he you know if he feels like it, the backstab, the preps, the sprint on the next turn possibly. A lot so of things. Next turn is um, seven mana. He has, still has the coins, so basically eight. The double preps will give him basically fourteen mana. Yeah, or he has to go all in almost. So even next turn. with like, even with the sprint, he will still have seven mana to use, which is great. And maybe he can turn the game around somehow. As long as he doesn't go for prep coin, <laughs> I'm okay with it. Well, Savish made that call. When? Oh like no! On stream, two days ago or yesterday. Uh, on stream, it's fine. In a tournament setting, it's, it's <laughs> yeah, different, yeah. right? Like in a tournament That's setting, cool. it just feels even worse. But all right, so another high main gets developed. The same one, and exactly here, the web spinner just filling up the curve of a Maz quite nicely, giving him a little bit more of a board. Not a huge advantage, mind you, because Unleash would take care of those one ones, but an advantage nonetheless. And he's just going to press it. Honestly, yeah, RDU course. needs to find a really sick card off of that sprint. So Those two preps, preps could be very important. Eight. You can go prep sprint, you have 10 cards then. Yeah, you can think here's Blade Flurry perhaps. Wow, that that violent, uh, violent teacher is basically his disadvantage here. At, at this point, it almost is. He finds a fan of knives, that is no help at all. Emperor Thorsten is also no help. Eviscerate right. mm. is almost no help. Wow. You know, this reminds me of playing Miracle Rogue when you don't find the Auctioneer. Well, you had this print, so it's not so bad. Yeah, but I feel like the options you're looking for, you're looking for a very specific thing, right? And you just don't have it. So, how good is... The fan of knives here. He'd need to find Blade Flurry to make it really worth doing. You unleash the hound's value, man. Yeah. Second eviscerate. Doesn't make a difference. He's gonna be able to clear both minions at the very least. With the backstab on slime and the possible coin prep. If you had a coin eviscerate on the uh, minions on the board. I think his like he he's okay-ish. Although not amazing. Blade Fury would have just covered this entirely. Yeah. It's really pity that he didn't have the Blade Fury. But now unleash the hounds and nine eight points. King of Beasts, look at that, King of Beasts. Oh wow. <laughs> look at it. might we see a huge King of Beasts? Is oh, this wow. a dream? Is this being a dream? Used? Yeah, the two staffs have been used. One of them was used on a uh, an early Pilot of Shredder, I think. Yeah. And the second one on the high main. High main. So you just drop the <laughs> King of Beasts with how many? Oh wait, 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 no. Wait, that's six. That's um eight. I can't believe uh, that. Eight six King of Beasts. What's the I don't. Step? I don't even two, know. Right? Yeah, it's gonna be an eight six, I think. An an eight twelve or whatever. I don't know. It's eight eight whatever it is. I'm not sure. It's just gonna be a crazy King of Beasts. That's all I know. 
And that, that's really all I care to know. I hope he goes for it. Because I've never seen this card be good. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, RD is going to get slammed with the King of Beasts. <laughs> oh, wow. That web spinner being MVP. And now, how does RD answer this? Oh, I think the deck hand will have to come in and help here. It still doesn't clear. Yeah, with well, Eviscerate, it does. Doesn't so, it? Yeah, it's six no. damage. You, you're, so, you're, Emperor, you're... Coin... No, you can't. You have to. You have to get the weapon. Hmm. Yeah, you have to dagger up South Sea, eviscerate, and then figure something out. Probably play a Drake on the back end. Do you have the mana with the coin, or do you just whiff? Actually, you could go for just eviscerate. Find something you want. Oh, oh. that's a draw. That's a draw, definitely. Well, you have to kill it. Question is, do you? Well, I guess there's really no option. Yeah, you have to backstab Eviscerate, right? Yeah, I think so. I can't see anything else. Now the question is whether you coin Dagger right now for next turn's Lotha of Tinkers, or... Because RDU has to be looking forward to the win eventually, and that's the problem. That's the situation he's stuck in. Oh, there seems to be a visual glitch for RDU, so he has been executing a play. So he did backstab Eviscerate, in fact. Well, King of Beasts didn't last long. I'm a little surprised and disappointed. But it does have only 6 health. I wish King of Beasts gained plus 1, plus 1 though. I, I don't know why. I, I thought it, it did for a second. I thought it was actually good in some cases. Mm -hmm. But it's not. Oh, we seem to have only one game view, so the, the, the upper hand cannot be seen for the time being. We'll be back in that with a few seconds, I think. Yep. So he talked like the SI7 agent. That wasn't in his hand before. And actually, RD it might doesn't be able look to bad. spin back. It, yeah, it doesn't look bad. I think a Blade Flurry is going to help oh, a lot. Oh, this will change a lot. This will change really a lot. Yeah, if he plays for value here, which I, I think he will. Yeah, any trade it's gonna be crushing. Sense, yeah. Now with, you have the freezing trap up, you can play the positive shredder. So only a blade flurry kinda saves him. That's he still has the pirate, right? So he can trigger the freezing trap of the pirate. The freezing trap trigger will be cheap. It's the uh the follow up, like how do you seal the game? Yeah. Is gonna be the problematic thing, I think. So he's got to dagger up. I think he might have found the blade for you, otherwise why pop this, right? Oh! It's not freezing, it's not it's snake, not it's explosive. It's not snipe. That's interesting. Really yeah. Interesting. Say the least. Wait, wait. Misdirection? Yes! Oh my goodness. What do you think about that? Hmm? He didn't attack. I have, I have okay, no so idea. he has no blade flurry. It's got to be that, right? He has no blade flurry. He did attack the minion. It, it does have to be misdirection, doesn't it? Or explosive. It's either or. I, I think explosive would make a lot more sense with Zoo in the metagame, though. Okay, now we have both hands. And Lothev gets smashed on the board. Vile Teacher for three mana. I don't think it'll get much use, sadly. It's still a coin. Ugh. What oh, a top wow. deck here. Doctor out of aggression, GG. no problem. If if Doomsayer comes out of this, though, that's gonna be hilarious. Oh, that's even better than, yep. <laughs> than whatever. Wow. What those are do you need? Um, Miracle. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. That's one turn too late. <laughs> A little too late. Although, if he goes for Violet Teacher Blade Flurry, no, he no doesn't way. even bother. He's gonna be dead in two turns. Probably doesn't play any healing. Um, and that means his aggressions follow up are just gone. Although this is a decent matchup for Rogue uh, with backstab SI7s, mid range Hunter is easier than face Hunter. I yeah, but think he lacked the Blade uh, Flurry. That was the, the most early game was off, uh, completely yeah. off. He was lacking the Blade Flurries, he was lacking the agents. Um, yeah. Well, that's going to be. Uh, 
Well, he everything. He had the sack, but like yeah, backstab, SI seven, eviscerates. Everything was completely thrown off. But I mean, Amaz's hunter is now locked, which means Druid and Warrior left, and RDU's rogue, although it has a tough time against Warrior, in theory, uh, might be able to take up against Druid. A pretty good matchup, and he still has Druid and Paladin on the back end. So how how bad can this lineup really be at this point? It's hard to say. It's really hard to say. The yeah. rogue is a weak point, I think. I agree. I think that's like the the only weak point that I can look at here. Mm -hmm. uh, but then again, you know, he had a favorable matchup there. We say it's a weak point, but he had a favorable matchup in that, in that hunter thing. Like going into it, if you didn't know better, uh, if you didn't see the outcome of the match, you would say that generally speaking, this is a pretty good pick. So although it's a weak point, it is a weak point after this game. But otherwise, it feels like it's going to be, I, th I think it's a pretty well-rounded lineup. True. Well, RDU will be picking Paladin and Amaz will be picking Warrior. So this is, again, skewed, uh, skewed in favor for RDU, but we'll have theoretically, to see how... Yeah, yeah. theoretically. It's still what like 60-40, I would say. Grim Patron, you, you think Amaz will play that? I, I don't know, why not? I didn't see him playing like OTK, combo wombo type of decks at all. There, there's a first time to everything, right? That's Maybe something true. with a priest. But with yeah. Valen's shows, like uh, Prophet Valen and yeah, yeah. get mana reduction with Emperor. Yeah, double mind blast for 20, sounds balanced. <laughs> Okay, so it might be a usual contra warrior. The okay, war eggs should block, Palta Shredder. Seems okay. Yeah, it seems like a standard control, um, control war. We'll have to see though. There have been a lot of variants of warrior coming up recently. Um, oh wow, this version here for RDU with the Palta Sky Golems. An amazing card against the warrior. It's like a Savannah Hyman. It's That's crazy it. good against warrior. And the shielded mini boss is going to be able to deny the early war axe value that you would otherwise be able to get against something like a knife juggler. And the Maz is going to be forced to ping the shield off and take two damage in the process. That's not even the damage is not even important. The important fact is that he used both durability. Yeah, on, on the, one minion, exactly. Yeah, on one minion, exactly. It's the craziest deal. And now he can stack the damage with the one ones, which is also really important because. You know, Amaz is lacking Whirlwind or Unstable Ghoul. I think he can, he can just ignore the Pilot Shredder. For now, I think so. I mean, we'll have to see what he follows up with. Uh, that's a really bad turn. Yeah, I think you just ignore it. If there was a Whirlwind, you would have probably seen it. I would say so. So you just whittle down the opponent's health. It sounds a bit ridiculous to say this, but those 1-1s, one I mean, we're talking about 4 damage dealt. It's effectively like you had a 4-1 on the board. It's like a Paladin Shredder. Yeah. Except even more difficult to handle. Mm -hmm. And now look at this. Yeah, he will kill 1-1. <laughs> <one, one. laughs> wow. Hilarious. This value is crazy. Now, RDU has to make a What about the quality here. right now? I would I think favor it. quality would work. Yeah. Although you could, you do have equality consec. Ugh. So you just do a minion with your hero power and go face again? That. I think you can go face. I mean, play equality, minion, go and face. And go face. Yeah, let him make the trades. Because well, anyway, he doesn't play defend of Argus, unless I'm mistaken. You can kill the 1 1. I didn't understand that at all, to be honest. That trade. That basically gave afraid him. of Sludge Belcher? I don't know. I'm not... I, I think Sludge Belcher might make the difference. Like, the fact that you might be afraid of a Belcher means you don't want to make the trade. I guess if you had a Quarter Master, it would have been a bit different. Why not Long Tip? Dude. What the hell? Don't you understand those 1-1s? One you don't understand, Lothar. Those 1-1s. One don't you get it now? The dudes, they're threatening to invade Lothar. Okay, I get it you now. You handle the dudes. <laughs> Tyrion Look at the, and these Kirk one ones, man. Yeah. They're reporting for duty. Like, it's crazy the amount of value they've been getting. Just pinging away at the warrior's armor all game long. But look at that hand, that's crazy. KT for 7, Tyrion for 7, Consecration yeah. for 3, Piloted Sky Golem for 5. 
even I think the Tyrion for seven is just disgustingly good. Ooh. No, that this consecration is... can never be beaten, but your curve is thrown off because of it. But it's not that bad. No, I think you might have to play Aldor as a body, though. Do you, do you have to? I mean, look at this curve. It's so horrible afterwards. So, Dr. No, you can't play Dr. Boom. Oh, you've seen a BGH, but it doesn't really make any sense to skip this consecration. It's way too good. True. Yeah, there's no world in which I don't consecrate this board. I think you just make a dude, and that's it. Because the Peacekeeper will be really important against Shields Maidens, um, even Belchers, maybe. Or Emperor. Or an Emperor. Yeah. yeah, I was uh, I was gonna say like the, actually RDU has no answer to the Emperor right now. That's true, but he will just slam down Tyrion. Yeah, Tyrion. actually, a Moss cannot handle the Tyrion. Handle it. And what if? Could oh 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 uh oh no no? no do you? Do that. No, I don't think so. Uh... Actually, you could pile to the Shredder Brawl. But I don't think it makes any sense at all to try to get a good brawl out of this play. Like, it's just, it's nonsense. Now, RDU is not going to be able to sacrifice his Tyrion for the sake of getting it back with KT. But he will kill the Emperor, I would say. Oh, oh nice. Wow. That's really insane for RDU. This BGH is going to allow him to clear this board clean. And uh, he might even... I mean, how, what, what if? What if it hits the Tyrion for four? Nah. He did not. He plays Kaigon. Yeah, this is a great board for RDU, but I think Amaz is going to be ready to brawl this with nothing but a boom bot to lose. If he gets his Harrison Jones now, nope. If he got Harrison Jones, I think RDU would escape concede. So out of, uh, out of frustration. Have a minion from the Palutin Skygon. The boom bot stays alive. No way. Yeah. <gasps> I saw it glow green for a split second there. Did you? Wow. It glue green. And he can still attack. Yeah. Salt. <laughs> ah, doesn't hit. Those boom bots have been terrible though. But wow. A little he got justice. like the worst four drop almost. I think Jeeves would have been slightly worse, but not by much. Good for him that he still has Dr. Boom and KT in hand. He can make that work. Yeah, you resurrect the boom bots. <laughs> That's evil. <laughs> And Amaz is punching face with the weapon. Well, it makes sense. So you just drop the boom, right? Or Belch? Sure. sure. Nah, probably just. <laughs> what about KT instead? Well, that's like, you really don't need executes. KT. Like you need, you don't need KT as much. Like to resurrect, you're never gonna be able to get resurrection out of it. And you're forcing the opponent to have execute, or a really good shield slam. And since you've already seen one sh one execute, you're probably not. Too afraid of the second one, since there's been only one Acolyte played with the quality. But there's the Execute. That's gonna be a really good follow-up for Amaz here. Having had two turns of Emperor Thorson, he's gonna be able to put down pressure after pressure. But... RDU's got a sick hand as well. I have to be honest here. What's important, he has... Uh... Bigger value in his hand than Amaz for now. Especially with that shield slam being basically not important at all. It's that card, like two points of yeah, damage. Yeah, it's. Well, you've got a shield maiden, so it's gonna be a total of seven. You can kill Dr. Boom with it, which is exactly okay, what he wants. Never mind, skip, skip, well, skip what I was saying. Is Scratch it getting that. late where you live, Lothar? <laughs> yeah, might be. I would like to inquire <laughs> as to the local time where Lothar lives. Twitch Thank chat. you. Twitch chat will just destroy me after that. <laughs> Twitch chat destroys anyone. You know what? You could be the nicest, smiliest person ever. Oh, hello, MC Tech. And they would, they would still destroy you. They would still destroy you. You could be... You could so... be Nat Pagel. <laughs> and they would destroy you. What do you think about Belcher, Pilot Shredder, Face. Yeah, I think Face is good. I, I'm a Hunter player. Actually, you could just Aldo Peacekeeper one of those minions, right? 
Uh, why would you do that before my MC deck? Nah, that doesn't make sense. Right. And you is Amaz gonna play phase. into MC tech? I think you attack phase with that because you have two Crucible champions in your deck. Maybe you would like to get that. Oh, imagine this Levanas being grabbed by MC deck. The irony is real. It's funny to think that a little gnome engineer in his garage can actually come up with an invention that beats the the reincarnation mechanic of it. What the hell is this light well gonna do? Actually, it's not even terrible. It's just nearly useless. Oh wow! All right. Okay, so now our uh, our has to kill the light well first, right? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, that's the least viable minion, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the thing is, if you do that and it doesn't get Sylvanas, are you in a bad spot? Not really that much, right? So he wants the, to kill the... He wants the light well? Oh wow, RD has a mystery plan. I don't know, man. That's... Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, he doesn't want the light well. Nobody wants it. And... Watch out! No Sylvanas! time for games! Just kill real. Stone! <laughs> After yeah. the brawl, now Sylvanas being grabbed. Basically the same chances, right? Yeah. Well, this goes back to the irony we were talking about earlier, right? Yeah. Of the um, MC tech having an effect that's as good as Sylvanas's, but for much, much cheaper. And I really don't know how Amaz is supposed to come back from that. He's on 13 health, and this amount of damage is just unrealistic for him to handle at any point. Although, a Doomsayer in that Shredder... A Doomslayer in that Shredder. Could you believe it? No, I wouldn't. If it happened. <laughs> I don't think it will. I don't think we'll get to see it, though, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I think RDU will play the odds and not to... pop the Shredder ever. Probably, right? Wait. 4, 9, 12, 13. Yeah, I'm disappointed. We won't see a Doomslayer. Yeah, he's your teammate. You should tell him to make those plays. Okay. Next time I will tell him. No, that's essentially a good game, I think. I mean, Amaz can't possibly come back from this. Unless he's got maybe Lay on Hands to stall for a turn, but... Does that even help? I mean, it helps. It gives you a turn of life, but that's about it. You have no cards. And top deck, a shield slam. I think that is be... not gonna do it. But Amaz might have a quest to play 40 spells. So 40 spells, yeah. yeah so oh, oh, it's not Doomsayer. Oh, you know what? It could have happened, actually. We could have seen the Doomsayer, but it wasn't there. And so Amaz is going to be losing that game. RDU is going to equalize the series after the first uh, the first match, Rogue versus this um, this Hunter deck, mid-range Hunter. Amaz is now down to Druid Warrior, and RDU is now down to... Actually, now that he's won with Pally, he's got Druid Rogue, so we'll see a possible Druid mirror match in the next few games? Mm, I would say... Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Um, Amaz might stick to Warrior, but I don't think like going into Druid with Warrior feels very good. But with, with Rogue, it's great, right? Yeah, do you take that 50-50 or do you just go for Druid? Because that can take games against anything and you don't really have... Like, even if you face up against the Rogue from RDU, your Druid has a pretty good chance, right? Depends on the build, but most likely yes. If you have double combo, then a decent draw in the mid game to get the combo into nine into ten, then yeah, then you seal the deal most likely. Yeah. Well, we'll have to see exactly how this goes. I I would expect a uh, druid coming from a Maz here as opposed to the warrior, but we never know. We've we've been we've been um, predicting a lot of plays that players just don't make because they think a lot, you know, further down the road or take the mind games a bit, you know, one step too far um, sometimes. Yep, and I was wrong. Amaz is going to be playing Warrior and RDU will stick to Druid, which I think at that point is going to favor the Druid pretty heavily. Uh, well, not but that heavily. We, we already saw that match today. Right. With uh, Reynard against... Um, he ran out of steam. Reynard against Orange? Uh, I think it might have, yeah, I think it was against Orange. Reynad played uh, his Druid. He had a really good start, but then no Ancient of Lore showed up. And Azure Drake was way too late, so the card draw mechanic couldn't really come into play to where, even though he ramped up, it really didn't allow him to keep the pressure up because there was no card draw. 
and that was a huge problem. So we'll see exactly if the same fate awaits RDU, or if he's going to get a bit of a better, uh, consistent output of aggro. I think it really boils down to the consistency of... Like, if you play on the curve against Warrior, you win. As a Most druid. likely. Would you keep the Ancient it. of Law against a, uh, against a Warrior? I almost feel like you should, but then again, what if you end up with a... Like, as I said, you have to play on curve. And right now, there is no curve in RDU's hand. Fawn, like, Force of Nature goes back 100% of the time. Yeah, that's true. Uh, definitely, that's going back. Oh, wow. Mulliganing for Wild Growth and Innervates, it seems. And now he doesn't have a Shred of Necks. I kinda don't like it. He might find one. You never know. No, he's bluffing the Innovate. Or he just... F or is he just falling asleep? Alright. Hero power. The Maz has to like this. No wild growth, no innervate play. Sometimes you're afraid though, because you're like, okay, what if he doesn't play anything here? Does that mean he's just gonna get a Dr. Boom on turn, you know, four? Mm -hmm. uh, or even turn three with double innervate? Like, what, what is awaiting me? Because you don't expect Druid to draw this slowly, but RDU finds nothing. Still not bad for this matchup. But yeah, but he's going to have to transition, like, soon enough, he's going to have to get something on this board. The mass draw is, heavily. seems to be godly, I would say. Yeah, he's curving pretty much perfectly and finds the other Shredder. That's going to aggravate RDU, who needs to find a Keeper oh, of the Grove wow. and the Whiff once again. RDU's face indicating that he understands RNG Stone to perfection. Calls the well played. <laughs> I think this was a mistake that, the, that he didn't keep the NX, you know? I agree. I think Shade of Nax was a keep. But he's going to get pushed out of this game possibly very fast. Oh, one turn off, Shredder. One turn off. You're a little late to the party. You have still to go to, for the Belcher. It sucks, yeah. but you have to go for it. I think RDU, if he does get you know the mid game in any way, if he somehow survives the onslaught that's coming from the Maz, could win the game, but it's going to take a lot more than what he's got. I mean, it's not looking exactly amazing for him. To be honest, I don't see this being possible. Amaz has so much cards, and a weapon, and a Belcher, which is a pain in the ass. Yeah, for, I think the card draw is the biggest deal. Because, like, without card draw, this would be fine if he just played on curve. But the two cards that the Acolyte of Pain got, that, that is a problem. That is a huge problem. Now Ardio has to play... Shredder, or...? Wow. Okay. That I, I, that's horrible. Yeah. No removal, nothing. Just a straight up minion heavy hand that doesn't go anywhere. How and you can play those that? minions in upcoming 10 turns. 10 turns. It's like 30 mana. Wow. Emperor value. How can you deal with that? That's insane. Yeah, I don't know that there's gonna be ever a better Emperor. Grom Hellscream for 7. I mean, your turn 7 is guaranteed to be amazing. You can curve in anything you like. Like Deathbite plus Shredder plus Armor Smith. That's just crazy. And RDU is going to nourish for Ramp. And he does. Gets the Shredder out right afterwards. No. Did you like Maz that? is going to get a second wave of Emperor. Did I mean, you like what's that? the option? What's the alternative? Just, just find boom. it. Just drop Boom straight up? Yeah. And see where it goes? Like, Ramp at 10-7 doesn't make any sense. Well, you play the Shredder on the back end, right? Yeah, I know what... <laughs> uh, I know what you mean, though. I know what you mean. Maz has a Nisera. You're in a back foot, so you have to make a comeback. You know, how can you make a comeback without the bombs? Swipe is not enough. So I would favor the Dr. Boom. Well, it's well, not looking what? too good. Well I think a, a Doomsayer... <laughs> well, what? Well played. I think a Doomsayer coming out of Shredder for... 
of Maz, right? Would be a devastating blow. But that's probably the yeah. one thing RD is going to be hoping for at this point. Is like, can I get a Doomsayer off of this, please? There's Iron Jesus. Otherwise, there's no way he can win this game. Look at that. Gromash, yeah. six mana. <laughs> I, even, even if he does get it. Even if. You know, let's it's assume he does top. get it. It doesn't even mean he's going to be able to do it. But this is going to be a six swipe, though, for RDU, to be honest. That swipe is going to be good. But it doesn't change much. Doomsayer. Come on. Come on. Hearthstone. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. Nope. <laughs> well, that's a bit anticlimactic. <laughs> <laughs> Doomsayer! River Croc. Okay. Nominated for most boring cool to story, drop bro. of Hearthstone. <laughs> it's like the. He just pops out of the shredder and says, Cool story, bro. Actually, he would have won anyway, right? Or would he? No, he had Gromash and uh, the weapon. Would have been close. Well, that was a sad game. Yeah, it was indeed. And the mod is gonna take this very slow. Oh man, I can't. Uh, very fast that is. RDU just whiffing at every lane. Like he he lost the no wild growth fight. He lost no innervate fight. Had a bad curve up until the very end. Um, and no way to really come back, but Amaz is now, you know, no more warrior, which means RDU has a free reign for his rogue and druid. He doesn't have to handle the warrior very, uh, like, anymore. And Amaz has only the druid left, which means RDU could get a 50-50 yeah, with still, his own druid. It's still okay to win, but um, RDU has to win two games in a row, which are, I would say, equally... F coin equal, flips. Yeah, coin flips for both players. I agree. You know what? Coin flip sounds like um in a negative way right we just yeah. should say equal chances yeah going winning. into the game blind if you didn't know the deck list and you just have a very um like if you have just a very general understanding of the matchup and you've seen very centered deck list you'd say they're basically 50 50 i'd say mm -hmm. I i'd agree with that generally speaking yep well, we'll see. It's going to be Rogue versus Druid next. So we'll see the Rogue versus Druid matchup before RDU takes the 50-50 of Druid versus Druid, which often comes down to whoever gets the best curve. Whoever plays on curve best is going to get the edge in that matchup, usually. Amaz had Harrison Jones, right? In his... No, no, he didn't. Uh, he didn't show the Druid yet. Okay, never mind. He did show it in the Warrior. I saw the Warrior, but... Yeah, he had the um, uh, the Harrison Jones. In the Harrison Warriors. Jones was in there, yeah. Yeah, but there's no more warriors, so it should be pretty. It should be much easier for RDU going into this, I think. Um, he's still gonna have to get a really good board early on. Like Violet Teacher is really important in this matchup uh, against Druid because you force a swipe, and if you they don't have it, you're gonna be pretty well off in general. And a good Blade Flurry sometime in the mid late game to reset the board so you can get the advantage even further. So we're going to have to see what RDU picks up. But if his draws don't line up, this could be the match point for Amaz, who's going to be going up 3-1 against RDU, who's going to be, I think, denied the ability to get into the top five for the reason. I would say so. He has 3-4 right now, right? Yeah, check. if he goes 3-5, I think that might just be what it takes to throw him out. Um, RDU, 3-4, yeah. The of the top five. With minus 3 tiebreak, so his tiebreak also sucks. Okay, so just a reminder, by the way, tomorrow we'll have even more games. Uh, instead of being casting on Thursday, we'll be casting the Thursday games on Wednesday. So we'll have two live coach matches today, which should be kind of fun. Uh, <laughs> if long, at least fun. All right. Arby well, doesn't have the coin. And Amaz has, has the Wild Grove. Yeah. And there is a Ragnaros. I'd like to point out. Like Ragnaros, Doctor Boom, and Lothab are the three game winners against Rogues. Oh, even the well, Shaman Shaman is in two. Whoa, what? I would have coined the hell out of that wild growth. He keeps it for Ragnaros, I would say. And oh Innervate. Oh my god. Wow. But that's the sap. Yeah, right. The sap is going to deny. Amaz's ability to get a really disgusting Ragnaros that's not going to be answered. At the very least, that's that. Well, do you want it to have a minion on this turn that will help immensely here? Where 
So next in Ragnaros. Right? Do you, I think he has to go for it because he's close enough. Like even if it gets sapped, he still has a pretty good follow up. Like he still has a Sludge Bellator into Zombie Chow right away. No, oh, he goes. Like, for he's the just grab. gonna take the Coin Keeper. You know what? I don't even disagree with that. I think it's a safer play, and it doesn't put you all in on the off chance that the opponent has a sap. Although I don't think Ragnaros. Uh, I mean, Ragnaros would have been that all in of a play. It's just that with the Violet Teacher around, um, you then end up a lot of one ones on the board if you don't kill it right away. I think RDU has to use the Blade Flurry this turn. You have to remove that first wave of minions at the very least. It feels like a bit of a waste, but at least the shade's not gonna grow any bigger. Yep. So that's the that's what he's looking for here. It's not letting the shade grow out of Blade Flurry range while he can. And Ragnaros is gonna come down. There's no accompanying pressure for RDU unless he finds a prep here, it's gonna be our sap pass. Which That's is really terrible. Bad. So see deck hand. No, that's not helpful at all. Yeah, not helpful one bit. So sap, you know there's no Ragnar's in next turn. Yeah, and then you've got to turn to plan out your stuff and hope you find a good sprint, the possible other answer. Well, there's the sap. Step one. Sap. Step two. Top deck, the second innervate. <laughs> Step three, replay rag. <laughs> oh, I didn't like that at all. South Seas just straight up for damage? I think it slows down RDU, like Amaz's potential tempo. I just don't think in this case it's worth it because it's not turn eight. If this had been turn eight and Amaz yeah. had, you know, Ragnaros threatening to be replayed, then sure. But, but on, not in this scenario, I totally agree. Oh, backstab, SI ping, and then you can kill the slime, but I don't think mm. it's gonna be the long-term win play here. Arden you know, knows that he's in a really bad spot. Yeah, he knows what's coming up next. Like, he is fully aware of this Ragnaros about to slam down on the board, and that's 11 damage coming up this turn, which puts RDU down to 9 health, which means really that's effectively one turn away from death. Most of the time, at the very least. And turn for combo next turn. I think RDU has to top deck prep and in like Azure Drake into prep into Blade Fury or some such thing for the Tinkers. Oh, never mind. That's gonna seal the. That, never mind that, actually. Amaz has taken a really much safer line of play than what I suggested with Ragnaros. This is gonna seal the board to guarantee a much bigger damage output. Yep, that's the game, I would say. We'll have to see. RDU thinks so as well, which makes this match. Wow. Amaz takes the series. Against RDU's horrid draws, um, his matchup, you know, the two of the matchups, I think, before going in, he was favored, but the law, you know, the draws didn't line up one bit, um, and he's got to feel a little bummed out by that, but at yeah. least... Uh, he was so punished quick. by not keeping the Shade of Next Ramus uh, against Warrior, I would say. Right. That I, might I think have you're changed. right about that, definitely. Maybe if he'd kept it, it would have given him the tool to contest the early game that Amaz just... And we have to say, you know, Amaz got a really sick early game. He got a really good early game for something like a control warrior. Yeah, and RDU true. had no way to answer it. No Keeper of the Grove, to, no to, Wrath, nothing. Yeah, was... basically this play was 10-5. Yep, and he just hero powered until then. Amaz was preparing yep. for some kind of, you know, double innervate play at some point, but it never came up. There was no such play available, so Amaz was under zero pressure that game, pretty much, and took it pretty easily. Well, that was fast. What I have to say that all the games we saw today were totally brutal. They like, were blowouts. A lot of them were blowouts yeah. out of nowhere. Like, decks that usually play slowly ended up being super quick on the clock with perfect back-to-back -back drops, just going straight up for the kill. And that's not something you see very often. I mean, hell, we saw a... Um, a, what is it? A face hunter losing to a druid's pressure with yeah, a zombie yeah. chow, like turn one, two minions. Uh, Druid of the Flame with zombie chow from Frezar over Gara. That was just a crazy start. And that seems to be a, an ongoing trend today. Like just complete blowouts from decks that usually take a bit longer to ramp up. True. Well, that's it for this match. And we have one more match ahead of us, which is Tramp versus Dog. Right? Yeah.
they're both at the exact same score in their respective group, uh, and they're, they're both in the same group in effect. So they're battling for that fifth spot at the moment. Doug is currently sixth place in the group, and Trump is currently fifth place. So Doug is going to be trying to swap places with, uh, with Trump. If he can make Trump go 4-4, four, four, Trump will become sixth place, and Doug will be going up to uh, fifth place. So they're just about to swap. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the breaking point for the top five to get reinvited to King Win Pro League. So Dog will do his very best to win this game and secure a spot in the potential uh, follow-up season. Okay, so now we'll be going to a 10-minute break and then we'll proceed with the last match of the day. Yep, don't go anywhere. <laughs> 